Welcome to season two of the Crypto Pulse podcast, your ultimate guide to the world of crypto, Bitcoin, and world economics. We're here to guide you through the crypto universe with thought provoking topics, in depth knowledge, and information to help you make informed decisions. We'll also be interviewing some of the best minds in the industry, such as CEOs of crypto projects, traders, economists, authors, and development teams from around the globe. And now for the episode. Fergandis, welcome to Crypto Pulse. We're really excited to have you on the show to talk a little bit about what you guys are doing at Lossless. Uh, it's a really innovative project and we're super excited to delve into the detail of it. Um, but first of all, before we get into that, maybe, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this space in the first place. Yeah, sure. Uh, so first of all, uh, hi, Kevin. Hi, Ben. It's, it is my pleasure to be here and to talk to you guys. So talking about myself, in general, I started the crypto journey in 2017 when I joined the uh, crypto project uh, here in Lithuania. I was working there for a while as a product manager, uh, but after some time I left for the, uh, to work in another crypto project, but it was like more uh, local uh local crypto exchange here in Lithuania and from 2020 summer when DeFi started to boom I started to interact more by myself with the DeFi protocols and so on and so forth and um, and yeah I started to I started to, to invest more to to play with DeFi protocols and I got um, got to be scammed and hacked for a few times and I and I started to think about the ways you know uh, how we can protect the new, not like the newbies, but also the newbies and and you know all DeFi users and so on. Uh, and yeah, and that's how you know we 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 came to the idea of losses uh, a little bit later in 2021. It's a real problem because I think to get any kind of mainstream adoption or any adoption outside of the the crypto space, these problems really do need to be solved. Because if you talk to anybody, even like your Bitcoin maxes and people that are a little bit more um, risk averse in the space, they really don't like DeFi and some of the some of the things that have happened. And there's you see some of the headlines about the hacks and the losses and it can happen to anybody. So maybe you could tell us what is lossless? What are the problems that you're trying to solve? And what's the journey been like so far? Yeah, so in general, lossless is a web-free security company, I would say right now. Uh, but we started from uh, one problem, which was like the uh, hacks on chain, which uh, which was which was mostly for the uh, DeFi protocols. So in general, we started we started with the idea as um, freezing and reverting transactions in the first place uh, but later on we started to build an other project which we um, which we are related to cyber security for debt free so right now we have uh, even more products uh, like uh, token minter vault protection uh, and our latest product is aegis which is also for the security uh, reasons um, like monitoring tool monitoring tool from them security perspective for, for the company. So, you know, if I can to summarize, right now Lostess has the vision, you know, to become one of um, one of the leading companies in the cybersecurity for that free. Mm -hmm. As far as this market is uh, still emerging, like in general, cybersecurity in, in Web 2 is still emerging and still growing. <laughs> so uh, yeah. so yeah. Especially, especially in Web 3, we are in a super early stage for the security. And uh, right now I, uh, I'm seeing a lot of like um, young companies entering Web 3 from a security perspective. And you know, everyone is trying different approaches, different verticals and so on. And I'm pretty sure that you know it's it's going to be a very hot topic in the in the in the next years. How do you even go about addressing the problem? I know you're going to tell us a little bit more about the losses protocol in a moment, but how do you even begin to address such a complex issue? If you see the big picture uh, of of crypto, there are like different verticals of of a hack, and you know. Like uh, in the US uh, only, it's uh, it's very hot. It's very big issue of ransomware. It's just a simple ransomware, but people uh, are losing cryptos and uh, and so on. So we started, you know, from the 
DeFi protocols. And, you know, we just, we were focused only on this, on this issue only. So that's why we started from the lossless protocol and the, you know, with the um, huge complexity and because it was very hard task to understand properly how we can save, how we can work in, in uh, how we can help for DeFi protocols and so on. So the idea was, you know, to go one step at a time because like there are like different verticals of the hacks and scams in the in the crypto. All right, Ben. Sorry, over to you. I'm I'm hogging I'm hogging all the questions yeah. again because I get car- I get carried away with these things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, just a, a question, just to touch on the lossless protocol. Um, so we've we, we've read that you describe it as a hack mitigation tool, and on your website you also describe yourself as a new layer of blockchain transaction security. And I just wonder what specifically does the protocol do to improve security, um, and how does it ensure that these projects are protected? against attacks yeah so uh, lossless protocol is kind of a uh, complex protocol <laughs> i would say <laughs> yeah a lot of a lot of different parties and a lot of moving parties so but i would say that uh, you know i can start uh, from the phrase you just mentioned a hack mitigation tool this is the, exactly what was the initial idea and by saying that we mean that you know we cannot say that you know like all hacks can be saved, you know, because it's kind of everything is going on on chain and it's very hard to catch and so on and so forth. So that's why it's a hack mitigation tool in order, you know, to minimize the losses in the market. So um, starting with the lossless protocol, there are like three parties in general involved. So first of all, uh, for projects, for other for other uh, tokens to in, in order to use us, they have to insert like a snippet code into their uh, smart contract of their token. So um, we can work on the, the, the token project at the moment. And uh, once they insert uh, that snippet into into smart contract, um, they have the option to enable or disable in, in general lossless protocol. Uh, so this smart contract, it's kind of regular ERS-20 token, just mm-hmm. with a few lines, uh, few lines of uh, lossless code. If a function is enabled, uh, for example, there is the hack, there is something suspicious in the, uh, for, for that token. So anyone who has LSS tokens, they can stake and report that transaction. In general, in order to report the suspicious transaction, you have to stake LSS tokens. And you want to report because you are going to get the, uh, some cut from the from the saved amount so in general in general when the transaction transaction is reported uh, it means and we call it that the, um, these funds are frozen in general mm-hmm. it is not like the frozen frozen but it's like from a technical perspective the the uh, the, uh, the address is just blacklisted from sending these tokens to uh, any other wallet so in that case the Suspicious transactions, suspicious activity is reported, and these tokens cannot be sent anywhere else. So after that, there is like a uh, forty-eight hour um, window where lossless decision-making body um, ha- has to decide if it is the true hack or a false hack. And if it is the true hack, um, these uh, this report, this frozen uh, amount is going to be sent to the initial owners, and the seven percent cut will will be will be taken and uh, will be distributed between different parties. And if it was a false hack, uh, that wallet will be able to send uh, the funds somewhere else. And uh, talking about lossless decision making body, uh, it consists from three parties. It means us. As a lossless company, another party is um, token owners, which was uh, hacked, and also lossless committee, which is formed from nine individuals in the crypto space. So this is kind of three parties uh, who have uh, who have to decide if it was false or uh, or true hack. So I have a question about how that decision making process works. So how do they know whether it's a hack or not? Uh, it's probably a really basic question, but so it's the lossless protocol. Uh, it's the token holders, and then you said nine 
yeah. did you say nine yeah, members of right. like n- nine individual n- nine individuals in uh, from crypto space one is like one is from Tornado yeah. Cash, one is from uh, MakerDAO legal team, and and and, and few of and few other guys. So the whole process is, uh, looks like that. Uh, you know, we we create some sort of report about the incident, about suspicious activity, and we send them. We send that information to them, and everyone has and everyone has to sign the transaction where they are voting. Um, based on 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 their you know thoughts on the report and the incident and uh, yeah generally this is how we'll, generally this is how it works we have like a closed group with all these people so we can uh, we can connect with them uh, pretty quickly do do all of those members have to sign whether no. it's uh, a true hack no or in general like um, in order to decide on the incident it has to be like um, two out of three votes. So it means that someone cannot vote, and for lossless committee uh, to 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 get one vote, it is a quorum of uh, uh, three three or five uh, members. Uh, so at the moment, whilst it's a um, it's technology and it's a decentralized protocol, it still requires um, human verification. It still requires human beings to make a decision. Do you think that? one day it won't require human beings to make that decision? Uh, good question. In general, uh, like, it's my, like, uh, it's kind of related to the DAO in general. DAOs in general, you know, if, if it is can work, like, without humans. And my personal uh, opinion is that it is kind of extremely hard to to be like fully automated in in in, in these in these mm. scenarios scenarios. And also, uh, I just want to mention that uh, recently, like, uh, Stanford uh, Stanford team they issue they uh, uh, they issued a paper about a hack integration tool in general in general they created almost the same mechanism with the same protocol like uh, ours but uh, uh, just on paper just the researchers and we started to talk to them and then uh, we think we believe that uh, with the help of uh, some people from Stanford we can we can um, improve our lossless protocol, and then we are going to work closely on on um, on lossless protocol because it, for them it was very interesting aspect, and they didn't know that we uh, we are live and we have already coded everything, and the protocol is working. So for them it's very very interesting, you know, to yeah. validate their like initial ideas and so on and so forth, and we can you know force uh, force uh, our resources uh, jo- join our resources. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand the size of the problem that you're you're trying to solve, and because when there's hacks, we we see the headlines where there's like hundreds of millions or tens of millions of dollars worth of tokens hacked, and of course that that the size of that particular hack, the size of that problem is large because the the sums involved are large. But how many other smaller hacks are there? Like how how big is the problem? I guess is the question I'm I'm In trying general, to ask. Um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't check like the, this year statistic, but I'm pretty sure that it will be again like more than three billion dollars stolen. Because you know we know we see these uh, big headlines, but also there are like plenty of small hacks, scams every day. You know where people are losing like you know up up to fifty k or something like that. Like um, when it was a bull market. Mm-hmm. Like we used to get like every day, every day, a few emails from like people who got scammed and they were asking for, for, you know, for, for the help and the amounts they lost uh, used to be, you know, from 5,000 up to 50,000. So I would say, you know, the, the problem is huge and, but it is, you know, on the different scales also like, you know, retail. Uh, retail are you know are getting uh, getting scammed all the time, and also they are like a big companies. Like, so it's like very very wide uh, range for for get, uh, for getting wrecked. You know, for for being wrecked. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, 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 I love that phrase. I love that it's still used in, in Web three and DeFi. 
Um, I, I want to move on just to talk a little bit about um, Aegis, which you mentioned at the start of the show, and you've described it as providing threat monitoring and smart contract defense capabilities. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about uh, Aegis, how it works and how it fits into your ecosystem. Yeah, so this is kind of our um, newest product, and we're working right now and looking for the... Uh, for, impro- for for improvements and looking for the new customers and so on. So um, this product is focused to be you know the monitoring tool from a security perspective for the businesses. So you know just to understand for you, you know let's take the example that you have a you are a DeFi project and you have you know like I don't know five different smart contracts where all the all the logic uh, all the logic is sitting all the activities going on and so on and still you have to you have to dedicate at least one guy who is going you know to check all the parameters all you know like um, numbers on these smart contracts you know tvl like ownerships and so on so forth like and uh, and it is the resources of a of a person who has to monitor all the time so in general we want to be that guy but you know to be as a as a tool so that's why you know we want to add right. different different um, aspects how you can monitor monitor your smart contracts and all the suspicious activities uh, what's going on there and just to inform the project owners if something is fishy is going on or you know like predict that you know there is possibility you are going to be attacked or there is a possibility that, that particular particular address is if it if it if particular address is going to interact with your smart contracts, it can be high risk and so on, so on. So we want to add uh, different uh, like rules triggers at the moment, and uh, just ju- just uh, to help you know for the projects to to, mm. to monitor their their smart contract, their wallets, you know, and then and, and to be and to be uh, safer. It sounds interesting, and it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's a, definitely a unique approach. I mean, could you give me an example of the type of rule or trigger that you would be looking for that that might give an indication that a hack was about to happen? Yeah. So, f- for example, um, we have analyzed a lot of uh, previous hacks and uh, how they were performed and what what was the patterns and so on. So, for example, let's take the easiest one. Uh, there is a new wallet. Who got funds from Tornado Cash? They and yeah. and they and they, you know, it is already like high risk. After that, that address who got funds from Tornado Cash, uh, they, for example, deployed uh, unverified smart contract. So we can, you know, to decode that and analyze what is in, inside. So in general, if it is unverified smart contract, so it's already higher risk. And if it is going to interact. The viewer protocol, it it can be very suspicious that you know that that uh, that type of guy is going you know to to to, to interact with your protocols. So you know we suggest, for example, that you you would need you know to block maybe this user and uh, you know not let not let uh, him to interact with your smart contract. But in order to do that, it has to be the bigger integration in general on uh, on chain level. Because you know the hacker can do everything like in one transaction in one in one block, for example. So for that reason, you know you have to analyze the mempool and everything so so quickly to give uh, to give the best uh, to give the best uh, suggestion how to interact and how to perform. And I guess your job at Aegis is with Aegis is to make sure that you are constantly evolving and building defense capabilities um, as the kind of security landscape changes, right? I mean, we've seen the sophistication of hacks and security breaches change just even in the last couple of years. I mean, is this a product which you you're kind of constantly rolling? Uh, new updates for? Is this something that you think you just kind of have to keep building as time goes on? So, um, usually uh, I like to say that, you know, I, uh, for a regular person, you know, not from the crypto space, and w- when I need to um, explain what is Aegis, for them, I, uh, I say that, you know, let's take the example of antiviruses. You know, they are yeah. all the time, consistently, they are analyzing the hacks 
uh, not the hacks, uh, mm. like attacks and and, yeah, and the hacks, viruses, and so on. And in this way, they are evolving and they are you know updating the, their uh, algorithms and they are finding the patterns and so on and so forth. So in, in general, in general, the same mechanics um, are applied for us because in order you know to to improve, we have to analyze and we have to predict. We have to you know we have to go. Uh, you know, um, by the side of, of 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 the hackers, and you know, improve together yeah. together with, with them. So yeah, yeah, interesting. I guess you guys have to keep uh, one foot in with what's going on with cyber hackers too, right? I mean, you have to sort of keep up to date with what the most sophisticated me- methods. Oh yeah. Are. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And also, just the, I want to mention uh, that like a lot of people. Uh, when I uh, I am uh, I start to talk about Aegis, they think that we are kind of like chain analysis and I know DRM labs or or or, or some other pr- these cybersecurity companies. But in general, I usually I, I I emphasize that like chain analysis and all other bigger biggest players right now in the market they are very focused on the email side in general you know because like in institutionals mm. exchanges and so on they have to be compliant with the regulate regulator so for them like the chain analysis and all of our companies they are especially needed from the compliance side and for email definitely they are providing the general security 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 um, uh, stuff and so on but we are in that case, we are different because we are not so focused on the AML stuff, but we are focused more on the security stuff itself. And how has the reception been so far? I mean, not just with the community. Obviously, you, you know, you've got a great following on Twitter, and I know you've got a you know an active community. But how's the response been from the people in the industry and the the sort of projects that you've spoken to since you've launched? Uh, do, do you mean about uh, Aegis particularly? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Aegis in particular. Yeah. yeah so, um, Jenna. In general, in general, we launched only you know like uh, only one month ago, and we already right. already have like two paying customers, and we have few projects, uh, you know, on on the line uh, who are going, you know, who have to start using Aegis very very soon. So uh, so far, I would say that uh, we're doing pretty good, and people, and it looks like that companies are really once this product and so on and uh, yeah i just want to to um to th- to thank to my team that because like the first paying customer was harmony uh, after mm-hmm. because after the harmony bridge uh, we started to talk to them and so on and we we we, we noticed that they need the the aegis would be the perfect fit for them so this was kind of uh, a big a big client from the first shot so that uh, that's uh, really cool, and um, yeah, I hope that you know uh, we are going we are going to scale uh, pretty pretty fast. So, looking forward for the uh, for the adoption of of, of Aegis and and as a whole of Lossless. So, I, I just have a question about like taking your product to market because I think that uh, a lot of Web three projects. If I I know that's a very broad category, but let's just say. We class you as a Web three project. They they're very good at the technical side, but don't always think about how they're going to take their product and the offering to market. So, what's what's your plan to start marketing to some of the to some of your target market? Yeah, so uh, like we have a, we have a business development team in general here on site, and they are working very actively with another project for the lossless protocol and for uh, all the pro- all the products we have. Um, but right now, uh, with the Aegis launch, uh, we want to speed up the, the whole process of sales because, uh, because uh, this is kind of very useful tool and especially for the project so we want and it's very easy to integrate at the moment you know because you are just going to monitor all smart contracts and so on so um it's very start to it's very easy to start uh using uh, aegis so yeah right now we are very focused on scaling on the sales and besides that you know we're doing pretty good job with the marketing on on, on crypto community and uh, but yeah, it's a little bit still a little bit hard, harder maybe with the regular crypto marketing because because everyone is more 
engage, you know, more people like in, engagements and so on, while we are more focused on the product build and so on. So, yeah. Well, I think what you're building is is so essential, and I think any any projects out there that are taking security seriously need to need to have this discussion. Um, so, what do you have planned for the rest of the year, and what are you looking forward to in 2023 and beyond? Our plan is, uh, as I said previously, you know, to scale to get more to get more clients and and so on. But you know, besides that, we want to we want to grow our team we want to scale and we want to explore new possibilities in the security space and it means you know maybe building other other um, project uh, products related to security to security or you know doing a huge like improvements for aegis and for lossless protocol and in the future we are thinking you know the the ways how we can you know to join all of our products into one maybe product you know and how it it could look and then and, and also like for the next year you know we uh, we we have like the backlog of ideas you know how we can you know use also like other uh, other uh, databases of uh, hacks and so on you know to be to be in the to be as a data providers for us for example to analyze everything and so on so we have plenty of ideas you know just need to execute them properly and to see, you know, uh, how market react, how clients react, and you know, to to um, to go with the to go forward, you know, with the feedback from from the clients and and community. Sure. And and is there anything else that um, we should talk about today that we haven't covered already? And then um, maybe you could also just tell our listeners where they can find out more about your projects and what you're doing. Yeah. So um, all the information regard, regarding losses. Aegis Losses Protocol and all of our products can be found in the in our website, um, Telegram chats and, and and Twitter. But I would say you know the Twitter uh, that, uh, the Twitter account is a mu- 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 uh, must follow if you are very keen for security and the free. And we are providing all the all the latest information about losses there and also you know just uh, sometimes even tips tips uh, about uh, about hacks and so on and analyzing the hacks or like educational material so yeah and also we have a newsletter we we are sending like each month where we have all all covered information in in one place and um, yeah and talking about um, what else should be and um, you know, good good to know for the listeners. Uh, I would say you know that um, we are very we are very open um, for our losses protocol to be better and better. So that's why we are all the time looking for the you know um, developers to grow developers community who can be involved more uh, into our ecosystem and help and help us from the outside. So, you know, if you are a developer and you are interested to, to the security and side, so, you know, drop us a message and, and, and let's, let, let's have a chat and, and, and see how the things can go. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. We'd love to talk to you again uh, next year at some point and see how things are going and um, how many more projects um, are using what you're doing. So thank you so much for joining us. And um, yeah, we'll catch you soon. Thank you, guys. It was, it, it, it was a pleasure to talk to you and, uh, and I hope that the listeners will enjoy uh, this um, podcast and the last thing I want to say you know guys uh, be safe be protective and be suspicious all the time because a hacker a hacker scammers ne- never sleep no. so yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks guys great great yeah. advice thanks very much <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this episode. It would mean the world to us if you could leave a review wherever you're listening. This really does help and allows other people to find us online. You can keep up to date with new releases of the podcast by subscribing and following us on Twitter or Instagram for the latest crypto-related news. 
Information provided by Crypto Pulse via this podcast, website, social media channels, and any other medium does not constitute financial advice, investment recommendations, or any other type of advice whatsoever. The Crypto Pulse team are not professional financial advisors. Trading and purchasing cryptocurrencies do carry risks, and anybody wishing to partake in such activities should seek professional advice.